chairman of the American Conservative Union, the nation's oldest conservative organization. He's endorsed Donald Trump. And Carlos Watson, founder and editor-in-chief of the news site Ozzy.com. Carlos, let's start off with you here. Uh, the polls, this is like a scripted movie. It I is. mean, of course, we wake up, and it's a dead heat, virtual tie here. Uh, what do you need to see tonight? Uh, two things. I think from uh, Hillary Clinton, competence won't be enough. Uh, we saw that with Romney and Michael Dukakis in the past, that if you're boring, even if you're clear, that's not going to be enough. I think she needs a reason to inspire her base and make sure they show up. And I think on Donald Trump's side, a little bit like Ronald Reagan in 1980, and do I have the temperament to be commander in chief? Clearly, the New York Times does. So you saw that devastating editorial in the last couple of days. And Matt, that, let me bring you in. The temperament issue keeps coming up with Donald Trump. When you look at some of the polling, that's what concerns people. Again, is it enough for Donald Trump to go 90 minutes without saying something that he would normally tweet and that maybe he will tweet as soon as the debate is over? Is that enough? Is that the bar you want to live with in this country? I think Carlos makes a great point. I do think this is a lot like 1980, Tamron, and I do think you're right. It comes back down to this composure and presentation over 90 minutes. And I think it's much like 1980 where, uh, you know, 60, 65 percent of the American people believe this country's on the wrong track. They have serious issues with Hillary Clinton, and they're looking at this guy, Donald Trump, and they're saying, Can, do I see him as my president? A lot of Americans are just tuning in, and they'll be tuning in tonight to see, to answer that question. With so many undecided voters who tend to vote for the challenger, yeah. Donald Trump has the momentum, and he has a real opportunity to, uh, to continue this momentum to Election Day. But, Matt, going to this question, and I, I wonder now how much of this is rote memorization for people when they're asked if the country is going in the wrong direction. I ask that because the right. president has his highest approval number um, right. since taking office. So when Donald Trump gets on the stage and blames Barack Obama or says that Hillary right. Clinton is an extension of Barack Obama, who is more popular than any right. number that Donald Trump has seen outside right. of maybe right. whether he's a good host on The Apprentice. So, I mean, how do you get up there and, and dispute the, 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 the approval number of Barack Obama? I think that, look, the pollsters I talk to, both people who are for Trump and Republicans who might not be Trump, all tell me the same thing, which is a, it's a big mistake to go after Barack Obama too aggressively because his numbers are where you say they are. The question is, can Barack Obama transfer those numbers to Hillary Clinton? That's the handoff is the problem. Barack Obama uh, has pretty good numbers, has been above 50 for a very long period of time. But Hillary Clinton has much more wobbly numbers. She's upside down. People don't view her as honest or, or trustworthy. So he needs to take the fight directly to her and make the case that uh, and connect with these Americans who believe that we need change. You know, Tamron, you know in every poll it says people want change. They want to disrupt Washington. They want to change the status quo. Donald Trump is that candidate. So, Carlos, how does she navigate the handoff tonight? You know, I think she's got to do a little bit of what Papa Bush did back in 1988 when he said unequivocally that Ronald Reagan had two successful terms and in effect vote for a third term. I think we've seen low unemployment here. It's been cut almost in half since the height of the recession. Uh, stock market doing incredibly well, starting to see more IPOs, gas prices low. And so there's a real argument for Hillary Clinton to make that uh, Barack Obama has gotten the country back on a stronger track, and I can help extend that lead. And oh, by the way, when my president, or when my husband, rather, President Clinton did it, 22 million new jobs. And so we haven't heard that strong economic argument from her yet. I think now could be a real opportunity tonight. We're almost out of time. I do want to get to a couple of these questions. Matt, off the top. Um, Oaktown Toddy says, you know, why should the American public trust a candidate who won't show his taxes? How does Donald Trump answer that? Uh, he answers that very clearly by every poll that says that more Americans believe that she is not honest or trustworthy, and the Clintons have been anything but transparent with everything from the fact that they said their foundation, would there would be a wall between the foundation and the State Department, which turned out to be untrue. Jim Comey said she was reckless. I think if she's going to make the ethics argument against Donald Trump, she's on very thin ice. So in other words, you wouldn't answer the question. Next question is, because that's a non-answer, Matt. Uh, specifically, your Thank plan you. I for ending... I, I adore you, but that just wasn't an answer. <laughs> specifically, your plans for ending the war in Syria. Kellyanne Conway was on saying... Donald Trump has a plan, but he doesn't want ISIS to know his plan. Does that then just...
the air, Carlos? Uh, you, you know, it worked for Richard Nixon in 1968, said he had a secret plan uh, to end the war in Vietnam, so it could work here. I think what you pointed out about taxes uh, is a stronger issue. And, you know, often really powerful one-liners can capture the debates. I think for Hillary Rodham Clinton, it's uh, what happened with, um, with taxes. Number two, treatment of women. You saw that recent ad, which I think is incredibly powerful. And last but not least, does Donald Trump know enough about foreign policy? Will there be an Aleppo mistake like you saw with Gary Johnson? I also think we're out of time. He has not spoken to any media other than pretty much Fox News on a national stage. If he's repeatedly asked questions, they're going to leave and say he was targeted by the media. And that could be a potential problem because a lot of unanswered questions remain with that foundation. And we'll see if they try to blame the media or not, either side, because that is potential both sides. Thank you both. Matt, Carlos, really appreciate